Now, how did the whole thing with DJ Quick start? Stop or start? Start. And we'll, and, we'll, and I know that you guys are cool now, so yeah, we're, we're going to go through the whole story. To me, honestly, to me, this quick shit got started over just people's misunderstandings of shit. He was a blood, I was a crip. Okay, that was natural. Okay. That was going to spark some natural beat. But at that time, niggas who got into the rap game weren't really... I was a crip. I didn't tell you that on my records. I didn't holler, I'm from Trag New Park every record. Like now, records, I'm a blood, I'm a crip. I represent this block, I represent this block. Back then we couldn't do it because the labels wouldn't allow you. Hmm. Fuck that. You start talking about you from gang banging it, so we did it on the down low. I, uh, you know, I might have said in interviews or people just knew I was from Trag New. People knew he was whatever. I had a whole album out before Quick came out. Okay, so, so Music to Drive By came out before Quick ever dropped an album. Straight Checking Them came out first. Straight Checking I had three albums first. It's a Compton thing, Straight Checking Them and Music to Drive By. Okay. On Straight Checking Them, I had a song called Death Wish. Okay. okay. Never knew who Quick was, but apparently his home, or whatever, I don't know. I ain't, I'm, don't quote me on this. I don't know how I got back to him. I had a song called Death Wish. In the song, it had a verse that said, biting me quick would mean you get my dick sucked quick. People took that hmm. to say I was dissing quick. Interesting. Okay. I never knew him. I, I, it was just a phrase to me. Yeah. If you bite my raps quick, you're going to suck my dick quick. That's what it meant. But he, his name was DJ Quick. So uh, naturally, that's a crip nigga over there. We bloods over here. He had a demo. And then my, my DJ was a blood, Mike T. Mike T had a demo tape of Quicks before he got signed. This was the one with uh, Real Doe on it? I have no idea. Okay. But basically all the song, uh, uh, 50 percent of the songs that were on this demo tape ended up being on his first album. Okay. Okay. He had a song on there where he was talking about shooting me and NWA, Easy E, from the top of the tree, because he was from Treetop. Right, Treetop. Okay. Probably. It was in the little demo tape. My, my DJ, Mike T, who was from Inglewood played the tape for me and it said CMW, NWA, basically all the Crip rappers, I'm going to blast y'all from the top of the tree, whatever, you know, it was, it was, it was, I didn't take none of it. I knew nothing about beefs, none of, whatever. I was still gang banging, so whatever. That rap shit was some rap shit to me, but it started es escalating. Then I did straight checking them, which had the line biting me quick in it. So I guess from the demo tape to that line, uh, it got misconstrued. He, he thought that was a reply to his shit. There you go. Okay. That's how the beef got started to me. Okay. So after he heard that, then, then what happened? After he heard that, then I think he did a song on Way Too Funky that he mentioned me in the song. So then I came back with Death Wish 2. Okay, well, what did he say on, on his album? Something about, I, I don't know what he said, it's on Way Too Funky. He mentioned a little line in Way Too Funky that mentioned my name. And that's how it got to going back and forth. <laughs> okay. Okay, so then you did Death Wish 2. I did Death Wish 2. Then he came back with, because uh, no, no, I didn't do anything on Hood Took Me Under. No, on Drive By Miss Daisy, I didn't do any disses because I didn't think we had- Music to Drive By. Music to Drive By yeah. did no diss records about Quick because I didn't think we had a beef. Then when he came back with Way Too Funky album is when I heard the Born, that's when I heard the line. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's when I came back with Death Wish on, on uh, Music to Drive By. 
And then that's when we did the video and all that. Premier did the remix, all that. We had a poster cut out of him, all that. So it was Escalate. <laughs> then he did Dollars and Cents and we both ended up at the Source Awards together. But it never, it never, it never escalated. To well, <laughs> so, so you have you who's representing Crips. Exactly. You have, uh, you have DJ Quick who's representing Bloods. Right. You guys are beefing on wax. It's now going back and forth now. Exactly. Like it's not subtle anymore. No, it, no. It, it's like you guys are saying each other's names. Right. Um, did it ever escalate into violence, not with between the two of y'all, but people around y'all? Um, he did a song where he got into it with some dudes at a performance. Everybody know the song, the, uh, the uh, I'm Not a Gangster song. I guess that was it. He did a song about the beefs. I guess he got into it with some dudes at a club and they said they were from, they were they were from the neighborhood and they were Crips and he was on stage and it escalated. That's when he talking about somebody got killed at, in the club or something, something. And they said he stomped somebody out or whatever. It never escalated to me personally. Okay. Outside people caught a lot of it because when the beef started, now you just, you got, you just got Crips and Bloods who wanna, you know what I'm saying? So if he's in a blood say you got Crips coming to his shows. I mean, just like I had Bloods coming to my shows. Yeah. Did I ever get into it with any Bloods? Maybe some words exchange, but never any physical, because I tried to keep it on that aspect. Right. I didn't want it to, because we had seen all that. I seen all that shit with the lynch mob and above the law in New York and the and the and the conventions and the fightings and all that. And knowing how the streets was here at home, like it was serious business here with gang banging. Yeah. So to have a crip and a blood going at it on each other, now you bring in outsiders into it. Cause just like I would say, if you like I never personally mentioned treetop when we when we beefed. Yeah. He mentioned Trag New Park. That takes me out of the element. Now you bringing them into it because I I don't I'm not like the like you said before. There's no leaders over here. Yeah. So if you take if I take it upon myself to not just say forget him but start dissing where he's from and dissing the neighborhood you from, now I'm inviting trouble from those cats. Yeah. I'm not worried about just me and you on a record. I'm inviting trouble from, from dude. So I try not to go there. I never tried to mention, you know, where you was from, or I never tried to mention, you know, you a blood or whatever. Yeah. I just kept it like we got beefs because we just, we just two rappers that got beef. I knew it was because of Crip and Blood, their initial foundation, but when you start mentioning like, oh, you from Trag New or you from Treetop or you from 60s or you from Grape Street or what, now you taking that element out of it. Yeah. Now you inviting, you know, right. you inviting the whole aspect. And I think that's what happened. For the fact that the neighborhoods were mentioned, he caught a little more situational from going to perform. I never got up on stage and said, F your neighborhood or your neighborhood ain't shit or whatever. That wasn't my aspect because I knew how it went down in Compton. Sure. Was Dollars and Cents the last like diss record that kind of went on between you two? No, because I came back with, um, I did, I think my last record for Epic was uh, Death Threats and I had a death wish on there. But then after that, it was, it, it was after, you know, Biggie and Pac and then all that crazy shit, I think it started getting to a point to where we didn't want to see any real serious shit going down because after he in the club shit and there was a big fight I heard, it was a serious fight and somebody did get killed, it started getting real serious. Okay. So after that, I took it upon myself to not even make any more death wishes. 
Now, you said you guys ran into each other at some point. We ran into each other, and then I was fucking with Snoop a lot. Okay. And he was fucking with... Death Row. A lot. So we would run into each other places. And then I think... Um, I don't know where we was. Uh, I was with Snoop somewhere at a studio, and Snoop had to go do an interview for BET. And they asked me to come, and they said Quick was going to be there. So I took it upon myself said, fuck it. I went to the interview. He was there. We talked about it, you know, whatever, whatever. It wasn't no beefs, whatever. And then I think that night I went over to the studio with him and Mossberg. Mm. And Rest in peace. Yeah. I went over to the studio with him and Mossberg because he was working on the uh, I think he was trying to do a soundtrack for the Freeway Rick movie that they did straight to DVD. Mm -hmm. And I went over there and we worked on a song or something. It never came out. But I think after that, you know, we we had no more in our corners. You know what I'm saying? He was his own man. I was my own man. No, it nothing serious like between we never came to fist blows or gunshots. So I think just as grown men, we were able to go, you know, I'm something. And that's basically how it ended. What was that first conversation like? Because at that point, by the time you guys talked, how many years have these disses have been going for at that uh, point? It, it had been about five, six years. So, so five, six years of talking shit about each other publicly, you know, what was that first, and that was the first time you guys ever talked? Yeah. Face to face? Yeah. You know, let me ask you a question. Before then, did, did one of the OGs ever call you up and say, listen, I'm, I'm gonna get y'all on three way, or I'm gonna set up a meeting, no. or I'm gonna, no. no. I got pulled over one night by Suge and his entourage. When we first started, like, we was in the middle of our beats, when he had first got with Death Row, because Suge started managing him. And my mom lived across the street from Suge's mom. So I think they saw me leaving from over there, my mom's house one night. Mm -hmm. And they pulled up on my truck, about six or seven cars deep. Okay. And they all surrounded my truck. And, you know, they were blocking off the streets and whatever, you know, making sure everything was secured. And Suge finally got out and he walked up to my window and I'm sitting there, you know, because back then we, we, you know, back then Compton was still a war zone. I was one of those dudes who still rode around with guns in my car. So I'm hoping that this is not going to be an ugly situation. But he walked up to the car and he talked to me and he was like, you know, I've been hearing about the beefs and shit with you and Quick and whatever, whatever. Because it had got to one point to where it was like messages being sent like, this is going to happen and this is going to happen and we know where your people stay and whatever, whatever. So Suge just reassured me like, you know, your moms live over here. Nothing's never going to happen over here. Nothing will never happen to your mom's house and shit like that. So it, it, it had got to a point to where it was escalating to the high heavens. But I think after that and like I said, there's other people involved. When you start thinking about family and moms and kids and all that shit, like it's either you gonna do what it do or the beef is gonna be squashed. So I yeah. think from there, from him going through whatever he was going through and me going through what I was going through and people in his ear and people in my ear, we just decided like, fuck it, you know? When we was able to see each other face to face on some grown man shit, it was like, you know, I ain't got no beef. I don't have no problem. You ain't got no problem. Fuck it. And that's just what it was. It wasn't even discussed to the, well, you said this about me or okay. you said this about, it was like, man, whatever. Water under the bridge. That's it. So you guys go and have this conversation in the studio together. Right. Um, and you guys work on a song together. Right. Which never comes out. Right. But still, the fact of actually oh, definitely. working I mean, on a song was. To different. me, it was just cool just to get that monkey off your back. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm a cat, like, I'm from the streets, I'm from Compton, whatever, but. I'm, I'm one of these type of cats that I like when it come to business and it come to music, you ought to be able to fuck with whoever you want to, go where you want to, and just have relaxed situation. And with me having kids and shit like that, music is music to me. 
I don't want to put it to the fact that it runs my personal life or because I gang bang and sold dope or whatever, it dictates that part. Like I got to be the gang banger dope dealer because that was my foundation of my music because that's what I represented and where I started off from. But that ain't, you know, that ain't the future. So I just had to learn how to not be a, a 18 year old want to be gang bang and track new park crip and start thinking about the future. And do I want to be around when I'm 50 and 60 and see my kids and grandkids? So you have to put, you have to set shit aside and be a man and squash your beefs. Right. And that's what happened. Right. And there's this picture here with the, the two of y'all. We took that at Snoop's wedding. At Snoop's, this is at Snoop's wedding. Yep. Okay. And, and you know, y'all two seem genuinely happy. Like, I mean, that's <laughs> how it is. Like I say, like I sell people. We both represent in Compton. We both had dreams of trying to be somewhere else than the blocks and the neighborhoods in Compton. And it's good that you got two artists that, like I say, any motherfucker who represent in Compton and don't have a problem and doing it to the fullest is cool with me. And that's what I had to look at. We all doing this for we are doing this for the city of Compton and to try to let people know that, you know, you got decent motherfuckers here. But this is all for the quality and for the history of rap music, too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We got to respect that, you know. Are you guys friends now? We cool. <laughs> like, we ain't, we, we don't, we not gonna call, we don't call each other and be like, hey, I'm going to hang out over so-and-so's house. Come, but <laughs> we've been to shows together. We've been in the studios. We've ran into each other at the same engagements. And it's nothing but, hey, you want to smoke? Let's smoke. Hey, let's let's go in the back and smoke. And yeah. He roll up, we smoke. I roll up and smoke. Yeah. We pound and be like, all right, I holla. You know, that's how it should be. Yeah, I've smoked with, uh, with DJ Click before. Yeah. In, in the MTV uh, bathroom one time. We did. Uh, <laughs> I did a couple of shows for them, and I think he. Uh, I did. A, he did his uh, when he had his Quicks Groove thing going on at the Key Club. I performed one night up there with him and Corrupt, and we went in the back, smoked. You know. He was by himself, a couple of dudes. I had about 30 dudes with me. And he came in the back with us and nobody was on no bullshit. Everybody was smoking, passing, you know. Everybody was asking questions and fans just like regular people. So that's how it's supposed to be. I didn't really care when I saw her. Like I went to say, hey, clearly she felt a certain type of way or something. I don't know if he mentioned he mentioned me to her before a son that she stood up when she saw me like she wanted to pop that bottle. Mm. So it's like, oh, word, you a little bigger than me, so you know I gotta hit you first, man. So the fact that he didn't go to jail for that, right? No, no, not at all. So the fact that he's famous got him into it and got him out of it, technically. 